chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again prove that sum of two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side suppose this is a triangle it is any triangle a b c let this side be a this side be c this side be b we have to prove that b plus c is greater than a merely only looking at this figure and trying to prove this fact is really looking very difficult but if we do some smart thinking and uh, and do this construction things will look very simple let us produce ab we can produce ab to any length it is a straight line can be produced but produce ab to such a point so that ad becomes exactly equal to b so we will produce ab to point d so that ad is cut equal to b next let us join d to c join d to c and we observe that the triangle adc is an isosceles triangle so if this angle is theta then this angle will also be theta so we can say since triangle adc is isosceles angles theta will be as marked so this is one thing we have in front of us next we can see that if this entire angle is alpha then we can surely say that angle alpha is greater than angle theta by observation obviously if we increase this angle theta only then will it become equal to alpha therefore this is a plain observation that alpha is more than theta so once this observation is there let us look at the bigger picture now look at the bigger picture that is in triangle bdc this entire big triangle since alpha is more than theta now this is alpha and that is theta that we are talking now since alpha is more than theta and we have already proved in our previous lecture that side opposite to a greater angle is longer than the side opposite to a smaller angle so this bd should be greater than bc because bd is opposite to angle alpha and bc is opposite to angle theta which implies what is bd bd is same as b plus c which should be more than bc bc is marked as a so this is what we wanted to prove 
which is exactly what has been proved. So this is how we can prove that the sum of two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side. As I have already told you that these questions of this type will definitely not come in your competitive exams. But the method of proof behind them, it helps us develop skills of reasoning. We become better at reasoning. That is the whole point why I am taking all this. Let us move to our next question, which is again an obvious fact. Let us move to our next question. Prove that circumcenter is equidistant from the three vertices of a triangle. This fact we have used in many of our previous questions and now is the time that we prove it also. So suppose this is one triangle that has been given to us. Let us mark the vertices as A, B and C. Circumcenter is a point which is equidistant from the three vertices. The definition of circumcenter is the point at which the perpendicular bisectors of this side, this side and this side they meet. That is what is the definition of circumcenter. But in order to prove this, that the circumcenter is equidistant from the three vertices, we must prove that all the three, all the three angle bisectors of the, uh, all the three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, they are coincident, they meet at a given point called the circumcenter. So let us very carefully see what we are trying to prove and how will this be proved. First of all, let us draw a perpendicular bisector to side BC, which is very much possible because we can draw a perpendicular bisector to any side. Let this point be D. Similarly, let us draw a perpendicular bisector to the side AC and let this point be D. So I am very carefully doing it and I am writing this point as O. Draw perpendicular bisectors of sides BC and AC. Let them meet at O. We have made no, no any implicit assumption here. It is very clear that these are two lines, different lines, perpendicular bisectors to them. They can be drawn and when they can be drawn, they can certainly meet at any point O. But of course, if we draw from O, a perpendicular bisector to B and say that these perpendicular bisector to AB, then of course there is a mistake in that because we cannot be sure that perpendicular bisector of AB will also pass through O. We cannot be sure because that becomes an independent thing. A line from here perpendicular to AB may or may not bisect AB. But of course we know that from day to day life that circumcenter is a point where the perpendicular bisectors meet but today we have to prove that they in fact do meet. So first of all we will start only with this part. So let us join OB, OC and OA. This is OB joint, this is OC joint and this is OA joint. We can obviously join them from any point. We can draw straight lines to, to point A, to point B and to point C. 
absolutely no assumptions have been made it is always possible and this is what we have just done we have joined ob oc and oa now triangle obd is congruent to triangle odc i'll write the reasons in brief on the right side obd is congruent to odc because od is common od is equal to od is common and one angle is 90 degrees angle odb is equal to angle odc equal to 90 degrees this is a 90 degrees angle and bd equal to dc because od is perpendicular bisector of bc this is non equal to this this is non equal to this because od is perpendicular bisector of bc and oe is the perpendicular bisector of ac and obviously this will be 90 this will be 90 this is equal to this and this is common so obd is congruent to triangle odc which implies ob is same as oc this is one fact that we can write down now on the same pattern similarly we can take triangle aoe and see that it is congruent to triangle oec now i am talking about this triangle and this triangle again they are congruent because this side is equal to this side this angle is 90 and this is common by side angle side and this one also side angle side similarly triangle aoe and triangle oec is again congruent the rule is sas in both cases now because this triangle is congruent to this triangle the third side oa and oc which implies oa should be equal to oc this is our fact 2 that we can write down so from equation 1 and 2 1 and 2 we can observe that oa is equal to oc is equal to ob oa is equal to oc equal to ob so this is what is one thing that we can conclude what this statement means is that the intersection of two perpendicular bisectors of sides o will be equidistant from all the three vertices this is only what we can say from this we cannot say that o is the intersection of the three perpendicular bisectors o is the intersection only of two perpendicular bisectors but not of third we cannot we have not proved it therefore o is one point which is equidistant from all the three vertices but we haven't yet proved that it is the circumcenter to prove that o is the circumcenter we must prove that if we draw a 90 degrees a perpendicular from o to ab because we can draw perpendicular from o to any side and if we draw a perpendicular from o to f then we have to prove that this side is equal to this side if we successfully prove that this is equal and this is 90 degrees by construction then we can say that o is the circumcenter of the triangle and all the vertices are equidistant from o so next drop a perpendicular from o to ab 
Now what can we say about triangle OFA and BFO? I will assert that triangle AFO is congruent to triangle BFO because right angle is common 90 degree common uh, I mean 90 degree angle or it is better to say that both are right angles both are right angles that is one thing their hypotenuse are equal as proved immediately above hypotenuse equal and one side is common one side is common so by RHS RHS rule the two triangles are congruent to each other and if they are congruent then AF must be equal to BF which implies AF must be equal to BF and therefore OF is perpendicular bisector of AB therefore OF is perpendicular bisector of AB and all of them meet at O which is equidistant from all the three vertices this is what proves our theorem instead of drawing a perpendicular we could have proceeded the other way around also we could have first taken the midpoint of AB and then joined it to O in that case by this side this common this hypotenuse proved this is bisected by construction then according to that approach then by triple s rule all that these both two triangles would have been congruent and since they would have been congruent this angle would be equal to this angle and we can prove them to be 90 degrees so we could have approached that way also if you do not want to rely on the rhs rule we could have used SSS rule by first joining O to the midpoint of AB and then proving that this is 90 and this is 90. Let us move to our next part now. Two right angles are congruent if their hypotenuse as well as any one of the other two sides are equal. This is called the RHS rule of congruency. We have in fact just now used it also. And while I used it, I also told you that triple S could have been used there instead of RHS. But RHS can be proved standalone also. Let us now prove the existence and the truth of the RHS rule of congruency. What this rule says, let me first of all draw a diagram so that I can explain what this rule is exactly about. Supposing we have two right angle triangles. This applies to two right angle triangles are congruent if their hypotenuse. Hypotenuse has to be compulsorily equal. Let me mark it as A, B and C and let me mark it as D, E and F. Hypotenuse must be equal and any one of the other two sides. Let us suppose this AB is also equal to DE. This is 90, this is 90. So if hypotenuse is equal and angles are, and triangles are 90 degree triangles, then either this side should be equal to this side or this side should be equal to this side. So if any of these three things they become equal, then we will say that we can say that the triangles are congruent and let us now prove this also. Let us first of all list what is given to us. Both triangles are right, right angled and obey 
Pythagoras theorem. This is one fact that is available to us. The second fact is that AC is exactly equal to DF and let us say AB and DE are equal to each other. These are the facts that are given to us. We have to prove that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Since this triangle is a right triangle, it obeys Pythagoras theorem. Therefore, BC should be equal to AC square minus AB square which implies BC should be equal to square root of AC square minus AB square. This is one thing that is available to us. Let us do the same for the, the this triangle also. We can likewise say that EF is equal to square root of DF square minus DE square. Now we know that AC is same as DF and also know that AB is same as DE. Therefore, we can say therefore BC is also equal to EF. This can be proved because it is constrained by the Pythagoras theorem. So if we say this is proved equal to this, this is already given, this is already given, this has been proved just now. Therefore, by triple S, the two triangles will always be congruent and which proves that if right angle hypotenuse and side are respectively equal, then the two triangles can be immediately taken to be congruent because otherwise we will have to proceed to find out the third side and prove the triple S rule. We need not follow the last step. We can just sufficiently say that if this is this, this is this and these are right angled, then RHS rule will simply prove them to be congruent. At the end, I'll summarize all the congruency rules, but let me take up our next question now. Prove that angle bisectors of the three angles of a triangle meet in a common point called in center. Let us first of all take our triangle, draw it sufficiently bigger so that we can see the entire construction. Let ABC be a triangle and let us draw the angle bisector of angle B. Let us suppose it goes like this and angle bisector of C it goes like this. These two angle bisectors will surely meet at a point O and let me mark this as equal to this and this as equal to this one. Of the three angles, but right now I am taking two of them because what I can be sure is that at least two of them will meet at O. Whether the third one meets at O is not sure yet, so I am not drawing that yet also. Next we have to prove that the common point may be called in center is equidistant from the three sides. So let us first of all draw a perpendicular from O to BC. Call it D. Similarly draw a perpendicular from O to AC and let us call it D. We can always draw perpendicular from any point to any line. So from here we can draw another perpendicular called OF. So what I have done so far is draw OB and OC as angle bisectors as angle bisectors of B and C. This is one thing and from O drop perpendiculars to all the three sides.
now we can see that triangle BFO is congruent to triangle BDO. This triangle is congruent to this triangle by this is 90, this is 90. Hypotenuse is common. No, not by RHS rule, but we can simply see by angle rule also. See, this hypotenuse is common. This is 90, this is 90 and this is bisected. So, we can write that it is by which rule? Angle side, uh, not angle side angle, angle angle side. Any two angles and one side. By AAS rule, these are congruent to each other. We need not think about the right angle hypotenuse side because about side we have absolutely no knowledge whether this side is equal to this side or this side is equal to this side. We have absolutely no knowledge. Only thing we know is that this angle is 90, this is 90. This angle is equal because this is bisected and this side is common. So, if these two triangles are congruent, then we can now think in the reverse direction and say that side OD should be equal to OF. The corresponding sides, they have to be equal. This is one fact. Similarly, we can see that triangle OEC OEC is congruent to triangle ODC. Again by the AAS rule, this angle is 90, this angle is equal because OC is bisector and again OC is common. So, by AAS rule, these two triangles are congruent which again implies that OE has to be equal to OD. This is our second equation. From 1 and 2, we can collect that by 1 and 2, OE is equal to OD is equal to OF. This is what we can collect. These OD is common to both of these equations. So, OE is equal to OD is equal to OF, which means that if O is the point of intersection of two angle bisectors, then that point is equidistant from all the three sides. The perpendicular distance of O from this side, from this side and this side is equal. This is one thing that we have proved just now, but it doesn't prove that O is also, O is also the intersection of the third angle bisector. To prove that, next join next join O to A. So, let us do that joining also. Now, triangle O F A is congruent to triangle O E A because this is 90, this is 90. Hypotenuse is common and this side OF has already been proved to OE. So, by right angle, hypotenuse and side rule, these two are congruent. And if these are congruent, then obviously this angle must be equal to this angle, which implies OA must be angle bisector of angle A. So, which immediately proves that all the three angle bisectors, they meet at point O and therefore, they, this point O is called the in center. Now, they meet at O and therefore, this O is a point such that it is at equal distance from all the three sides of the triangle. In one of our lectures, we have discussed in center in detail, circumcenter in detail. We have assumed these facts at that time, 
but now we have proved them also in our geometry by using the congruency property of two triangles. Let us proceed to our summary now. I will summarize all the three congruency criterion that we have studied till now. We started with the SAS axiom. This is an assumed fact. We started with just one SAS axiom side angle side property. If these are respectively equal, then the two triangles are congruent. Then we went on to prove that angle side angle or any two angles and one side if they are respectively equal then this was proved as a theorem that if they are equal then the two triangles will be congruent. Then we came to triple S theorem where we said if all the three sides are respectively equal then also the two triangles are congruent. And fourthly, we also learnt that RHS rule is there for two right angle triangles. If the right angle, the hypotenuse and any other side is equal, then the two right angle triangles will be congruent to each other. So these are the rules of congruency which I have summarized right now. So we'll close with this.